Hi, this is Yanni, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the basic navigation of a builder. On the right-hand side in the properties panel, we can name our story to represent whatever use case that we are developing. In this example, I'm just gonna put first story. We can also put it in the description of what our story is doing. This is gonna be super helpful when you're collaborating with your team and you wanna have the context of the use case. With tags, we can categorize our stories. If you wanna have additional monitoring, we have the monitoring option down here where you can select notify when any action fails and then you can put in whatever email address you want the notifications to send to. On the left hand side, we have our seven core action types that we can pull into our story and start developing our automation. We have webhook, HTTP request, receive email, send email, trigger, event transform, send a story, and then we also have these tools. Let's just click and drag a page into the storyboard and take a look. Pages let us create interface for our end user. So now that I have my page selected on the right hand side, that properties panel is now going to reflect for that page, just updating the name and then going to edit page on the bottom right hand corner. By default, we'll land on these elements in the center of our screen where we can edit the text for the paragraph. And so I'm just clicking in my new page and I'm changing it to new ticket. And I want to kind of develop a way to let people submit tickets to my team. So I'm going to use page to do that. So I'm just starting off by editing these elements here, but there's extra elements that we can add into our page. So on the left hand side, now that we've zoomed out a little bit, you'll see that there's these input fields. So I'm going to click and drag a email over. I'm going to remove the one from the name. I'm going to set it to required because I want to make sure that people submit their email address. And then I'm going to grab long text. And this is where people would submit their request. And I also want to make this required. So I'm just creating an input interface. Now on the top left, I can go to style and I can kind of finesse this a little bit, change the background color or the action color a little bit. I can set it to dark mode or light mode. I can set the content width to small or large, but whenever I'm happy, I can click in the top left to get back into my story. I wanna create some test data. So I'm just gonna click on the visit page on the bottom of my page after clicking into it. And then now I'm just going to add in an email address and then add in whatever my request is. Can somebody help me get access to Jira? I currently don't have access. And so this is what the end user experience looks like as we're building out our page. And this is a great way to kick off a story. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit. Thank you for your submission. I'm gonna go back into my story. We'll see in the top right hand corner, there's a little one. So this is the event data. When I click on it, it pulls up my event bar. The first thing I'm gonna notice is it says input, which is the same name as my page. When I click into the three dots, I can expand the additional data that is in the request. Now this matches exactly what I inputted, so everything looks good. I'm just gonna exit out of that event bar from now, and I'm gonna pull in an event transform from the left side, and the first thing I'm gonna do is name it to format. Now I'm gonna grab from this arrow right here and then drag it into my next action because I wanna make sure that whenever that page executes, it's gonna continue down the story. And the way that we continue our stories is by connecting our actions. I'm gonna use this event transform to do a little bit of formatting. So on the right-hand side of the properties panel in the builder where this purple text is, I'm just gonna go ahead and modify and add in my own text right here. So I'm just gonna write in, we've received a new request from, and then the person. Rather than typing out their name, I can reference the data from the previous page. So plus and then value. From here, I'm able to reference the input. So I can do input, body, email. And this is following the same structure that we looked at earlier in the event data. So this is a JSON path. So we're just basically going deeper into the JSON path to find the value that we're looking for. So any type of request or data that flows through your actions or your pages can then be referenced later on as you're building out your automation for your use case. I'm gonna add in here also the request. So doing the same thing with the plus and value, and then you'll see me doing input.body, and now I'm actually looking at request. On the bottom right hand corner, I can see, can somebody help me get access to Jira? So I can actually see that request it makes it so we don't need to look at the event data. So let me click out of that, and it's gonna also auto save, by the way. Whenever I go to my events, I can go and click onto the actual item in the event and then re-emit, and that will take that data from the page or whatever action I'm on, and then it will push it downstream the story and execute those following actions. Now that that event transform has received the data from the page and has executed, we can see here in the event data, 
it shows that text that I wrote, and then it also shows the data that we were referencing. So I see the request from, and then I see the email address, and then the request, and I see the data of the request. So we can start to see how we can pull in information and kind of cobble it together using the event transform. All right, so let's close this out, and I wanna zoom out and pull in a send email. I'm gonna connect my format to it. But before we do that, let's just go into the recipients and then just update who this is going to send to. So I'm just doing a quick email address for testing purposes here. And in here, when I set up the reply to, I can just delete that on the right hand side. You can set whatever you want for the sender name. So new requester, the subject line can be whatever you want. I'm just gonna put in here a new request. And let me grab that email address from before. So I'm doing the plus and then value. And then you'll notice the data is not there. This is because the action is not connected. Whenever you're referencing data from a previous action, the system will not be able to reference it unless it is connected in some way. So it can look at that previous event data. So let's just connect it real quick and then we'll be able to reference that email. Now that we have this connected, I'm gonna go and do the data for input.body.email, and then I see my email, looks good. And then in the body, I'm going to go and do plus and then value, and then I'm gonna do the input.body.request. Actually, you know what? We're gonna do format.message. So this is gonna tell us who sent us the message and we can quickly see how we can just reference that event transform and it doesn't always necessarily have to be the page. I'm gonna do just housekeeping, update the name of the action. Now, as I want this send email to execute, I can go into the previous action and then go to the events and then re-emit the event. But what I can also do is just click on the action, hit those three dots and re-emit last event. This is super helpful for doing quick iterations as you're building your story. I'm going to go into the event data and then just take a quick look. Seems like this was successfully sent. The email, I can see the subject, the body. I'm just going to exit out of the event bar. And in addition, on the bottom right, you can always go to options for any action. And then you can add in additional options for your actions. So there's a lot of cool extra things if you want to do attachments or uh, add in a CC. As you're using tines more and more and you don't want to necessarily start from scratch with your actions on the left hand corner we can go to our templates these are all pre-configured actions i can go in let's say i choose slack and i want to do a post message to a slack channel using a slack id so maybe i want to have an email send and then afterwards i also want to send a slack message to some channel so i set the name of the action notify team of new request Slack, and then from here, I would just configure my message that I want sent, and I'm just gonna do value and do format.message, so we see what that request was, and then we also wanna set the channel ID. Since this is just a test, I'm gonna put in just a very random channel ID here, and then you'll wanna make sure that you have any headers and credentials that you need for that API request because this is an HTTP request. Now I'm gonna to go to tools and then drag a note into my story and then just add in a little bit of context in the story build. So the email is the initial notification. The email is the initial notification stream, but we also have this Slack just in case people aren't reading their emails. So you can kind of double down with some of the notifications that typically may end a story. Now, not everybody has Slack, so whatever tool you use. Now, notes are actually done in Markdown, so you'll notice a formatting bar on the bottom. When I go and do something like add header, it just adds the pound button at the beginning of it, but don't worry because when you click off, it actually ends up bolding it. In addition to having stories being able to run, we can also test our actions. So let me pull in an event transform and do a quick test. So when I pull an event transform on the bottom, you'll see that there is a little test button. When I click that and then I click on test, I'll see kind of similar to the event bar and this is an automatically generated message from Tynes, which is the baseline message. There's nothing in the event bar. You'll see there's no event data. 
when I click run, that's when it actually generates that event data. You'll notice this has the same JSON formatting as the test. So let's just click out of that for now. And I'm gonna change this from the mode from message only to delay. And I'm gonna set this to three seconds. And let me connect my format into this action. And I'm just kind of rearranging this a little bit. I'm gonna set this to buffer delay as the name. And yeah, so I'm just gonna add in a three second delay after it formats and then it will send the email. Now, another thing helpful when building is in the top right hand corner under manage, you can actually manually add versions. So I'm just gonna hit that plus button. And then from here, I can actually rename this. So whatever changes you just made, I'm just gonna do initial change. If I go to manage, I can also access the change control. So when I go on and turn change control, it makes it so that any changes I make are not immediately affecting the live version of my story. You'll notice there's a test and a live tab. If I click on where the updates are from here, I can see all the changes that had been made and then I can name this whatever I want and then hit push. And then it'll go from the test version to the live version. And then it'll also save it in the version. I click into live, live is read only. But if I go back to manage and go to versions, I'll see it has that data of the changes that I just made. And I don't particularly need the change control on, so I'm just gonna to toggle it off for now. And that's just a choice if you wanna do that process. In top right hand corner, when I hit the three dots, I can export my story, which will be in JSON formatting. And then I can share this with a colleague. I can also save the story as an image, which is pretty cool. And when you save it as an image, it'll essentially show all the actions. And that's all we have today for this basic navigation from a builder's perspective. I hope you enjoy the content and we look forward to seeing you next time.